Hello everyone and welcome. A little bit of a different format here. So in this video we're talking about whether or not exhaust crackles and pops are fake. And I am joined by Matt Moran of Matt Moran Motoring. How's it going, guys? Thanks for uh, chauffeuring me around. Very kind of you. Absolutely. Uh, Matt's a good friend of mine, and we're doing this thing called AVA's uh, Automotive Video Awards. And we are in the Hyundai Veloster N, which, when you let off the throttle in N mode, you'll hear some nice exhaust crackles and pops. And so the first thing I want to do is explain why that's done, how it's done. And then we're going to talk about whether or not in the many cars that do that, uh, if it's actually fake and if it's something that enthusiasts should support. So my first question to you is, do you like exhaust crackles and pops? I love them. <laughs> okay. I think me and you, we both agree that the F-Type kind of started that. We both love the F-Type and it just continues with all these yes. other ones. I love the F-Type, uh, like you do. And uh, yeah, the sound it makes just makes you so happy. And we're going to get back to the F-Type because that's a good nice. example. Uh, and, and so we... we we like the sound of exhaust crackles and pops, but uh, what about fake engine noise piped in through speakers? I think it depends on the application to me. You know, some of them actually use recordings of the actual engine and exhaust, and mm -hmm. that I think is cooler. Some others try and synthesize and blend in artificial stuff, and I think that is what I dislike more. But generally, okay. you know, my theory is the more sound, the better. I enjoy sound. So as long as it doesn't sound weird, I generally don't frown upon it. Okay, so maybe like an artificial example being like the i8, and yeah. it's got that tiny little three cylinder, and then it has this like meaty interior, like engine rev to it and you're like okay something's not really matching up right okay and, and in my in my opinion generally I, I don't like faking things and I, I understand why it's done because manufacturers they don't want uh, to have loud interiors uh, the consumer demands hey we want our interiors to be quiet and yet you don't hear exhaust crackles uh, or engine sounds uh, if the interior is really quiet so you know you have these speakers that play those engine notes and then you hear them and you get the noise that you want which is the engine but you don't have you know those the tire noise or the wind noise yeah. so I get why it's done okay now how is it done how are exhaust crackles done so the way they do this is actually pretty simple so generally speaking you have your four strokes and I'm sure you probably know this but uh, I'm, we're, this is a little uh, engineering explained private session yeah. so you have it's your four strokes <laughs> intake you pull in that air and fuel compression you compress that air and fuel right before you get to the top the piston gets to that top of the cylinder you fire that spark plug combustion occurs there's plenty of time for that combustion to occur and it pushes your cylinder down you make power you go forward feels great everyone's happy now, when you let off the throttle, what this car does, instead of firing that spark before the piston reaches the top, it waits. So it compresses that air and fuel, and then on its way down, when there isn't too much time left, then you fire the spark plug. So combustion is occurring when you open up your exhaust valve, and then you get all of that noise thrown out the exhaust, as perfect example, thank you for doing that. You get all that noise thrown out the exhaust, and it's when you're letting off the throttle, so it's not when you need power, because what you're doing is you're changing where that peak pressure occurs. When you, when you have that exhaust crackle, you're having peak pressure occur when the exhaust valve is open. So that pressure just shoots out the exhaust rather than forcing your piston down. A little bit forces the piston down, enough to you know keep the engine running, obviously, uh, but that's not the goal of it. The goal is to make that noise. Now, with the Veloster N, and this is why I chose uh, this vehicle to do this video with, I actually spoke with Al uh, Bierman, who is the research and development boss for Hyundai, uh, and I was talking with him about it, and he says that the uh, implementation of those exhaust crackles and pops in this vehicle in end mode are specifically designed to prevent uh, turbo lag. So they're, they're done as an anti-lag system, so that when you're shifting gears, instead of having that pressure forcing the cylinder down and then cutting all power, you create that pressure and you have it in the exhaust. And it, by doing so, it keeps that turbocharger spooled up while you shift, and so you don't lose uh, that boost 
as you get into the next gear and you don't have to wait for it to, to keep spooling up. So it's a clever reason why they do it and it's a real reason. And so when I hear about that, I'm like, okay, this is actually cool. Uh, very cool that that's done in a production car and that it serves a purpose and that it sounds cool. So it's just like a, a win across the board to me. How does that everything sound so far? Yeah, I mean, I think if it's, you know, actually serves a purpose, then that's an excellent excuse to have the fun sounds, you know, especially in a vehicle like a Veloster N, you know. It, yeah. It totally fits. It is like kind of a rally car, you know. I, I completely agree. So we're changing where that peak pressure occurs off throttle and we're having it occur in the exhaust. Okay, so here's where I want to get back to the F type because the reason why it's useful in this vehicle is because they're doing it to keep a turbocharger spooled up. The F type is supercharged. There are naturally aspirated engines that do it as well. Yeah, and my, in my those, <laughs> yes. And so in those cases, it is not a functional sound. The, the sound is there for your enjoyment, and that is the only reason. Yeah. Uh, so does that does that alone? Because I'm going to go deeper, but does does that alone matter to you? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I kind of feel the same way. I mean, it's just like humans are animals and we're just kind of dumb animals and we like fireworks. And fireworks serve like literally zero purpose, but they're fun to look out and they're loud and that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think that's kind of why the exhaust thing uh, is okay with me. But I, I'm going to try and provide some more reasons why we shouldn't like it. Okay, so three additional functional reasons of what should you do when you let off throttle. So what should happen as soon as your right foot comes off the throttle, what should an engine be doing? Well, it should immediately kill fuel. Why? Okay, obviously, yes, it saves fuel. That's one reason. The second reason is those revs are going to remain high if it's injecting fuel. So if you're still having combustion occur, it's going to make it harder for those RPMs to drop. So in a manual transmission like this, you're going to get a little bit more rev hang as a result of that. Now, you can use the clutch to force the thing to drop. So in a scenario where you want to go fast, that's the way you do it. That makes sense. Uh, but, but the rev hang aspect of it, I don't necessarily like. And then also, uh, you know, you may want engine braking. Maybe you want immediate engine braking. So the second you let off and now you're having that combustion still occur, you're waiting for that engine braking to actually start. Uh, so fuel economy, engine braking, and not having those revs drop quickly, I think are three additional reasons why you may not want to do it. Does that change your opinion at all? No. <laughs> because, I mean, from a drivability standpoint, you don't really feel that. The engineers kind of work around that or whatever so that you don't at least I never feel that in my bullet for example you know? okay that's fair it is fair and you're not getting a lot of pressure because remember most of that pressure is going into your exhaust rather than forcing that piston down so it's still able to drop uh, you're not you're not producing a ton of power an interesting thing that Porsche does uh, different from kind of the others I don't think they do much of these exhaust crackles and pops from the factory maybe they're starting to now do you know of any I think the sport exhaust did it for a little bit and some of the like the GT cars and I think the sport exhaust the 911s and okay the 718 because one of the strategies Porsche does is they actually kill fuel but they leave the throttle open and that's kind of one of the big reasons for rev hang is leaving that throttle open but the reason Porsche says they do it is because they want to allow for that engine which is you know it's revving at whatever to keep forcing air Air through the turbo so it's not pressurized air from the sense that you know combustion is occurring but it's still more air than otherwise would be so they leave the throttle open and they keep forcing a bunch of air through it so that's Porsche's strategy which is different and, and doesn't have you know those exhaust crackles and pops uh, and still is functional yeah. uh, and I'm guessing I still haven't convinced you of anything as far as <laughs> why these should go away nope. <laughs> sorry <laughs> well that's great uh, let me see if I have any. I'm a any. simple man. What can I say? I like <laughs> no, the bangs and the pops. <laughs> <laughs> you like bangs and pops. That's fair. I, I think I think many of us do. So, all right. Here's another question. Then is is an exhaust crackle any better than uh, speakers piping in engine noises if it's not functional? I think it, I still prefer it because it's because still. It's a it still is real. Yes. You know, just because there's actually some type of chemical reaction happening. And yes. It's not just a speaker thing. It's not electronic. It's yeah. it's mechanical. But I know that that's probably silly to defend because they're both completely artificial. But yeah. Okay, well, here's... something to it. So know? my counter to that is, well, what about fake aero, right? Because, like, 
Fake Arrow is actually functional. It's actually real. They're blocking off ports because they're trying to improve the Arrow, yet giving it an appearance uh, that somehow, you know, there's all these scoops and inlets. The Super is a great example. It's covered in all these little plastic fake ducts, yeah. and they do it for aesthetics. Uh, but so it's it's fake, but it's kind of real in the sense that you know it's real plastic. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, or, or for example, like a, like a CVT, like CVTs now shift gears. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's not a great strategy. Like it's a fake shift in the sense that like there really is shifting occurring, but there aren't set gear ratios in a CVT. Yeah. Uh, and and I get mad about that. I, I like kind of call companies out, and I'm like, hey, why don't you use a CVT the way it's designed to be used? Why don't you use uh, you know aerodynamics the way it's designed to be used? Why don't we have exhausts that only make these crackles and pops if it's actually functional but then i i find myself kind of i guess like you feel going back to well it sounds cool so the end <laughs> yeah i mean i think the fake arrow depends you know, that's something comes into subjectivity and you know, taste and yes i mean you know some people for example really dislike the civic type r and the way that those you know they could have toned it down and yeah. still kind of had all the same function i think but then like with the cbt you know i think that does kind of go back to adding more fun because like in the WRX for example if you have to get the CVT instead of the manual you still can have a little bit of fun playing around pretending you're you know, doing sure. paddle shifters it's you know obviously yes it's artificial and it's actually probably less efficient and less uh, performance oriented to do the manual shifts but to me that goes back to the fun aspect and if it adds fun to the driving experience there's so many bland cars these days if a manufacturer is honestly trying to add fun I can respect it fair enough Okay, so to kind of close this out, uh, I, I think to, to answer the original question, are exhaust crackles and pops fake? Uh, I think that kind of comes down to how do you define that? And if you define fake uh, as something that isn't functional and it's there for subjective purposes, then I would say yes, in a, in a naturally aspirated or a supercharged car, they are fake in the sense that they are doing nothing. It's just a, a gimmick added to make us happy. Yeah. Um, and in a car like this Veloster N, you know, it, it actually can serve a purpose uh, according to those who designed it. So I, I respect that avenue a lot more than the other end, but at the same time, you know, if I were to, if I were to have an F type that didn't have those crackles and pops, like I'd probably be way sadder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's just, it all goes back to the fun. That's, you know, why we all love cars is for the yeah. fun of them. You know, they don't always make sense in various ways, but it's fun and that's why we love them. Fair enough. So thank you all so much for watching. Matt, thank you for joining me. For uh, I'm going to include a random video of Matt's that you should definitely watch if you haven't checked out his channel yet. He's an awesome guy. I truly respect his opinion, what he thinks about cars. So yeah, I chat with this guy all the time because I haven't done as many reviews lately. I think you do a great job with them. So you. if you are more into the review style videos, definitely check out Matt's channel. Again, thanks for watching. Questions or comments, feel free to leave those below.